Hello and welcome to a new tutorial guys and I'm really happy today because I have got 100 subscribers yes that's right I'm doing a 100 subscriber special today and we're going to be learning how to install and use Visual Studio 2008 to edit our Half-Life mods code which will be interesting so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to have to actually download it so if we open up your internet browser Okay, so I want to in the browser you want to paste copy and paste the link which I have in the description, which is http www.39.sifishare.com with some random letters and stuff. And um hit enter. Okay, here we are. So as you can see we've got HR code underscore VS two thousand eight dot zip. This is a file I've made specifically so that you can have the source code and Visual Studio 2008 in one file. If for whatever reason um, this isn't accessible in Zippy Share in the future, then I shall upload it somewhere else and um, I'll provide a link then for whichever site I upload it to. So anyway, if you click on download now, and it downloads down here if you're on Google Chrome, then if you do show in folder, and it will take you to its location, so my one's supposedly not downloaded. Any second now. Okay, here we go. So, HL code underscore vs 2008.zip. So, if what you want to do is right click that and go to 7zip, extract it to HL code underscore vs 2008. then it will take a short time to extract it all. Yep, so there we go. Now that's done. That's extracted. So it's extracted to here, HL underscore code underscore VS2008. And then here, as you can see, you've got four files. You've got one folder, and you've got two readme files, and you've got the actual install file for Visual Studio 2008. So what I want to do, I'll just show you the readme file. This is a quick file which I made just to show you how to install it. So obviously extract it, run the setup and follow the instructions and then once you've got that installed then you can use it by going into the this folder here and opening up source underscore dil dot l s l n. So quite kind of self explanatory, you open it up, vbsetup.exe. Say yes. You want it to make changes to go your computer because it's installing. As you can see it'll extract a bunch of basic files for the actual setup itself before we can actually start installing it. Okay, so in my case, my C drive is completely full up, so I won't install. But you get the basic idea, you double click it, open it up, go through the installation. It's like any other installation for anything else on Windows, generally speaking. You can change its directories and things, I believe, as well. So yeah, that's all good. Now we have that installed, what we can do is we can go to our Steam Apps folder, or wherever you saved your actual um, actual extracted file so mine's in steam apps so if I look at my desktop so I have a shortcut mine in here common first ok if you move it into here and just put it in a folder called source code or whatever and it's quite useful I have it all here you see and um, what you want to do now is go into source underscore del then open up source underscore dil dot sln. This will open it up in Visual Studio 2008. There we go. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio 2008. If you see on the left here, you have a solution explorer. 
and it will say HR here and if you click on the expand button next to HR and it will have two main folders header files and source files now what we're going to be looking at today is actually the header files and particularly the bottom one called weapons.h there we go I'm just going to move this out of the way your layout may look a little bit different to mine because I've been changing it and yeah well I have not yet I've had yet to change it back so there we go anyway so in here is the basically everything that Harfa needs for its weapons information such as how many rounds of ammunition certain weapons can have and what animations and things they need to use or what directories they need to access to be able to get things like models and bits and pieces like that and when they need to respawn and things and deathmatch maps and all kinds of stuff in here but um, even accuracy, vector cones for accuracy um, yeah and we have the actual weapons themselves so here you have class D Glock which is obviously the Glock and then we also have a few others as well like the crowbar we also have the base player weapon which is um, another file somewhere around which um, is a basic CPP file for creating your own weapons if you want to this is Python so that's the um, Magnum 357 and um, yeah, so this contains a lot of information about weapons in the game. But what we're going to look at is the stuff up the top, worn caps. These are all um, variables, generally speaking. And what we want to do is we're going to change, just a simple change in the weapon, is the, I'm going to say, M203 grenade max carry. Yeah. So if you don't already know, you know the MP5 in Half Life. Um, what the gr it has a secondary fire mode, obviously, which fires grenades. And at the moment, you can only have a maximum of 10 grenades at any one time for it. However, we're going to add a couple of extra zeros onto that. And then we're going to have fun spamming the grenade button. As well as that, you can also do some other basic stuff. We can change the ammo, max ammo things for the other ones as well. Like rockets, let's say you can have 30, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly, this is going to be one heavyweight hazard suit. We've got max clips, so when you, I believe, when you pick up. Actually, no, here we go. Yeah, so a max clip is how much you can have in it at one time. So, for a few of them, they won't have any clips whatsoever because they're not non reloadable. Um, so, at any one time, you can only have one rocket inside the RPG, one, like five crossbows all together in the crossbow, or five crossbow bots, and that kind of thing. We're going to change the RPG to about 600 at any one time, just for fun. I'm going to change, we've got match clip to 22. And change, now I leave a Python oh, as it is. MP5 match clip can be 200 easily. And default ammo is the default which it comes with, uh, it's the default ammo that it comes with normally so if you were to pick it up with a round it would be loaded with 25 rounds we are also going to change that to 200 um, yep so this is the default amount of ammo which comes with each gun when it spawns so obviously we've got it comes with 17 generally speaking they're the same as um, uh, the max clip size generally but um, obviously you can change it however you want again it's just changing numbers, it's really really basic stuff this and yet at the same time it can make such and such a big difference to the actual gameplay itself. Um, 
to look over here it says max clip so you can actually use variables to define how much something will use if you so it's a constant. Um, these are the different ammos and how much ammo we give to each person. So for the RPG clip, I'm going to say instead of RPG max clip, I'm going to say 600. And I believe for the grenades, they should be here somewhere. M203 box now. Might be box actually. Yeah, it's two, two grenades. I'm going to change that to 200 or 1000. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yep. So as you can see, it's actually got lots of little things in green. These are all comments. They're quite useful for finding your way around all of the um, files in the source code, and they kind of tell, they generally tell you what's going on at this particular part of code. So this particular bit: virtual int, add to player, C base player, P player. Is basically defining a variable which is an integer or a whole number, and um, yeah, it says return true if the item you want the item added to the player inventory. So yeah, it kind of gives you a general gist of what's happening, which is quite useful as the people who develop this. Um, yeah, so that's just some really really basic changes. Just change the amount of ammo at the moment. And there is actually a couple of other changes you can make, but for now I'm going to leave it at that. And these are just the, num the numbers given, the integers given to each weapon, so it can be called so by commands or by the code itself in game, and they want to spawn it or whatever. Um, yep. Yeah, so basically, that's practically it for this tutorial really simple, just changing how much ammo and things you can use at any one time. And um, before we go on, what I'm going to do is, if we move that to one side, is so we're going to build the solution. And this will turn it into an actual hl.dll file. And that is the file which Half-Life uses to get all of its information and to run like completely all together. So, yeah, it includes weapons, includes all the other things, all of these files, all of these files. That also has CR underscore DLL is another DLL file as well, which it also needs to run. But, um, yeah, so we're going to quickly compile this. So if you go to build, and then build solution, or build HL whichever one you want to do, but if you build HL, HL then it would just build HL as opposed to CL underscore DLL. Um, I'm just going to build HL for now. And as you see I have a little output down here. It should work, but for whatever reason if your C drive is full or whatever and it may not work because it takes a while to compile it all. And it will compile each individual part of file together. You might turn up a couple of errors, but it should be alright. So I'm just going to cut here and wait until it's all compiled. And then I can show you where the file turns up and how to incorporate it into your mod. Okay. So there we go. Build succeeded. No failures, no errors. It's all good. A few warnings, about 50 warnings, but apart from that, it's all good. So, it was saved at the build log, that is. It was saved in that location so you can see what was happening during it. But we want just this section. Wherever you um, wherever it went. So if you open up your computer, and then head on into wherever you um, have your source code. So again, Steam Maps for me. Steam Maps common, Half-Life SDK, uh, source codes, and here we go. As you can see, it's made a couple more um, 
files, but we don't need to worry about those just at the moment. And um, they just get made whenever you compile the actual thing. So I think it's in DLLs and debug HL. And in here, there's the build log. It's an HTML file. And it should be in HL. Ah, here we go. HL.DLL. This is the file we want. This is like the amazing file which does has all the code in and makes everything work. So what we want to do is copy it for now because we don't want to just move it because we can leave it there to be honest with you. And we'll go to common again in Steam Apps. Steam Apps common. Half-Life. Find a mod or Half-Life itself. I'm going to do a really quick Half-Life tree and I'm just going to impulse 101 to get this stuff. So you'll want if you do do any changes whatsoever and you want to um to a mod to a default hl.dl you need to make sure that you have the default hl.dll saved somewhere that dll file saved somewhere. So I'm just gonna save mine in GM desktop. I just move that over there, there for now. And I'll copy and paste in the other file which we just used, which we just copied from um, our source code. And that's all we have to do. So now, if you go onto Steam and you go onto your Half Life and you click Play, it will launch Half Life as normal with the exception. But your code will have changed the ammunition quantities in your weapons. So I'll see you ahead in game and see what's happening.